So we're here at uh, Embedded World 2019, and hi, so who are you? Hi, my name's Graham Clark. Welcome to the Renaissance booth at Embedded World. Here we're introducing a wealth of new ARM solutions for various applications. So first of all, let me introduce you to my colleague Stefan, who will talk a little bit about our RZA family. Hi. Yeah, hello, so my name is Stefan. I'm uh, responsible for business development, uh, RZA to MPUs at Renaissance, and we have uh, very great technology. So uh, this is the RZA to M MPU, basically. So uh, this is uh, covering basically class two of our EAI roadmap. Very importantly, so the what is the EAI roadmap? Yeah, so EAI stands for Embedded Artificial Intelligence. So this means basically AI on the node as opposed to AI uh, in the cloud. So you're running all in the node, this gives you a lot of uh, advantages, so uh, no uh, delay time, so you have all the data on the node, uh, very reliable, and uh, this is actually our differentiation because we're also very power efficient here. So you're doing AI on the microcontroller? Yes, yeah, so, so on the on MPU. The yeah, on, on the node itself, so we don't have to send basically the data or the information in the cloud. So we are very fast to do that. And uh, our special differentiation is basically that we have the lowest power consumption doing embedded AI on the node itself. So this and is uh, right here, I look and it says ARM Cortex A9. Yeah. Uh, is it a, like a small nanometer or how do, you, how do you have low power consumption? Yeah, very good question. So this is actually our differentiation. So we have the DRP on board. This is the dynamically reconfigurable processor. So we have a separate image here. And uh, so basically what happens is the DRP gives you hardware performance, but uh, you configure it in software. So you have software flexibility. You program in C code, but you get hardware performance. And uh, what this allows you to do is basically program in, in software, uh, high-performance libraries for things like image pre-processing. So you can use the DRP in EAI nodes to do image pre-processing. Uh, so we have an example here. So in this version of the DRP, we have uh, six tiles. Uh, so these tiles sort of uh, work like in a GPU. You can do parallel processing uh, on image data. So in this case, you uh, have six tiles working on a median filter. Uh, six tiles working on Canny, six tiles working on hysteresis. Each of these functions runs 20, 30, 40 times faster on the DRP tiles compared to software on the CPU. <laughs> and the second advantage is you can reload very, very fast. So on the one hand, the library function is uh, very, very fast and you can reload fast and gives you, this gives you a very powerful image pre-processing functionality. So DRP is your invention or your, yes, your so technology? Is it similar to a, a FPGA or a DSP or something? Yeah, it has a, a, a taste of a, a FPGA, but it's not exactly an FPGA because if you have an FPGA and you bring in multiple uh, applications, the FPGA quickly gets very, very expensive. So we can uh, actually, uh, on the fly, in nanoseconds, reprogram uh, the DRP, and this makes it uh, much more cost-efficient also, but also more efficient in terms of power. So it's a small thing on the SSD. It's, it's very small and uh, very powerful, very efficient, and it's Renaissance proprietary technology. This was brought over from NEC. So this is proven in the market uh, for a uh, big Japanese customer already over many years. So this is a very powerful technology and this is actually the center technology of our full embedded AI roadmap. Yeah, so you do neural networks on this? So at this point we are class two. This means uh, we do image pre-processing on the DRP. We then hand over the pre-processed image to the Cortex N9 where we now uh, run uh, pre-trained uh, AI models from TensorFlow Lite, for instance. So at this point, it's a, sort of a dual, uh, a hybrid uh, architecture or a hybrid strategy. So pre-processing on the DRP and then running the AI framework on the CPU. Going to class four, uh, which we will present next year, we then also have basically 
the uh, AI framework running on a different version of the DRP. This is our, the next device in our roadmap. And then also the AI framework runs uh, 20, 30 times more, uh, more uh, efficient and quicker. Uh, do you say if the other next one will be a different Cortex A something else? Yeah, so different uh, different core, diff higher speed. So this will, will be class three. Today we have class two, and here the ERP focuses on on image pre-processing mainly. Is it here? Yeah, yeah. So I can show the demo. So, so where, where's the chip? Yeah. So the chip is actually here. This is the chip. Yeah. This is the RZA to M chip sitting on the MPU board, and here we have a BP camera connected. Uh, the MPU board sits on a base board, and here we have a normal TFT display. So what happens is we ha we can here see the six tiles of the DRP. In this case, each uh, DRP tile runs a different function, a different library. And uh, so what this allows you to do is basically have a comparison between the CPU and the DRP. So in this case, we run the CPU. So here we require on the Sobel filter 8,000 microseconds. And we can switch this to DRP mode. And now we are much, much faster. So we are at 900 microseconds. And uh, so the, CP, the CPU takes like 10 times longer for the same function. So uh, basically, um, as said, the DRP is very powerful. It can do parallel processing. And we can also switch uh, through multiple um, examples here of uh, functions. And this is a really nice example too. So what you can see here in CPU mode, um, it is not very smooth because the Sobel filter on the CPU is actually too slow here. So it's a little bit blurry, so it's not really fine lines. If you switch that same exact demo to DRP mode, the lines become very, very smooth here. And so this means that the DRP can give you very power efficient uh, image pre-processing on things like uh, edge detection, corner detection, all the stuff that you need in embedded artificial intelligence frameworks. So uh, th this is a big launch, an important launch here at the Embedded World? So the RZA2M was actually available before, uh, so but we are actually uh, improving the ecosystem. So the ecosystem becomes ever more complete. We have more demos for things like iris detection, fingerprint, and in that sense, uh, we were launching the ecosystem, so to speak. And the uh, RZ is a Renaissance uh, yeah. building for ARM? So yes, so RZ is the family of Renaissance ARM MPUs. Uh, so Renaissance was in the business of MPUs before. Those were called SH, based on proprietary cores. But if you want to have a high-performant MPU with an ARM core, that's the RZ family. So here we have actually four subfamilies: RZA, which is sort of a mid-range application uh, family, RZG is high and industrial, RZT for more motor control, and RZN for network. Do you show everything here at the booth, or? Yeah, so we have RZG MPUs on the other side. Yeah. Uh, I would hand over to Christoph Adam for yeah. this one. Um, but uh, also very interestingly, we have actually five partners on the show that show the exact demo, uh, so many of our partners. So this means that our uh, MPU and our solution is very successful and highly visible already on the show. And A2M stands for? Uh, so, so RZ is the, uh, so okay, so R stands for Renaissance. C for zenith, so it means peak performance. So zenith is like a like a like a mountain, right? Uh, a means application, and then uh, two is just the second generation of that family. So you get uh, uh, peak performance and an application processor, uh, and now we have the second generation where we included a DRP. And the M stands for M is. Um, a, a mid-range, so to speak, in that yeah. family because we may add more components to the family. And uh, target markets are something like this? Yeah, target markets uh, depends so on RZA1. The target market was mainly industrial HMIs in the mid-range. Yeah. So we've been uh, massively successful in the uh, mid-range HMI in the white goods arena. So we have uh, like ovens and uh, uh, stuff that happens in the kitchen, like kitchen accessory robots. That was the For RZA1 many, many family. Many years? So yeah, so for the last couple of years, we've uh, we've been very successful uh, ARM in that chips. market. Pardon? Is it ARM? The last couple? Yeah, of yeah, years? yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Cortex A9. Uh, so the RZA2M family. 
goes more into that EAI space, so more image pre-processing, taking in uh, images over cameras, uh, performing uh, image uh, pre-processing and then running TensorFlow Lite uh, uh, networks uh, AI on the CPU. So it's a hybrid AI approach currently, uh, which is uh, very versatile and very efficient actually. So AI is a AI is a big deal, and everybody's talking about it. But it's yeah. a big deal that is coming to the embedded world, right? Right. So this is the way you bring it in. Yeah. So as said, uh, of course, everybody talks about uh, artificial intelligence today. As said, our specific strength and positioning is embedded AI. Uh, so very much focused on the node, and our very own uh, strength is really to have very very high AI performance. Uh, at the lowest power consumption. So many of our competitors in the AI space, uh, once they go to high um, performance on the AI side, they go uh, like 10 watts, 50 watts, so very high uh, power consumption. We really stay at uh, low single digit, uh, so two watts, three watts, even one watt, running uh, all the AI frameworks. And so we are very high performant in terms of um, AI performance, but we are very low in the power consumption. That combination is, is great for us and for our customers. And to have the AI in the edge is important because you have a less latency or something? Yeah, exactly. Less latency. You can uh, keep the data on the node, actually. So it's also uh, relating to security uh, topics. Bandwidth? Bandwidth, exactly. So many, many yeah. topics that give you an edge if you run it on the node. 